Corporation out of Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, what do you guys do? Tell us a little about your presence at the show. Uh, basically, it's our biggest packaging show. We do two a year, and we're here to demonstrate uh, our beverage fillers. And this is an example of one of our beverage fillers that uh, has actually been sold in Dr. Pepper, and it's going to end up in uh, Iowa, but it's here for the show. Uh, so this one has the, the greaseless drivetrain, right? Yes, it does. This is actually only the second new filler. It's a, it's a new product line for us, and uh, this is only the second ever system like this that is in a new filler. Wow. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit about it? What, what are the benefits of it? What's unique about it? Actually, these uh, drivetrains traditionally are all metallic, and due to the metallic nature of them, they do require a lot of lubrication and a lot of grease and a lot of maintenance. So over the course of the years, uh, customers have requested that we get rid of and reduce the grease usage in these machines because the grease does spill out into the drains and they have to pay to get rid of that. So this was a system we designed in order to basically facilitate the reduction in grease and eliminate the safety concern of that grease being out into the operator's platform and the slippage of the kettle curve. So it's really a sort of a, a safety issue, fueling the need, as well as an efficiency need. Absolutely. It's a, a, a big safety concern. It's an environmental concern because that grease was traditionally going down a drain. And also it's a maintenance concern because people do forget to grease machines. So this way, it, it's going to reduce about 70% of the grease consumption, so you actually have monetary savings as well from that system. How did you find out from your customers? Did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How do you find out the need for this type of machine? Basically, this upgrade was directly driven by our customer base. Uh, we do get feedback. We do talk to our clients a lot. They say, is there any way we can come up with something that would cut down on the grapes? If there was a complaint about these machines, many of these machines uh, are very old machines that continue in production. We still service 40-year-old machines. So it was just a situation where the customers are trying to come up, get us to come up with something that's going to help them maintain that machine and keep it in service. Now, as far as safety goes, what were some of the unique features that are keeping both the consumer safe as well as the workers at the plant? Uh, basically, it's all about the guarding now, and honestly, this machine here has a lot of upgrades. There's two things that happens in a plant. You cannot open this guarding, you cannot get into this machine, you cannot do any of that until you actually press a request to enter. So in the old days, what happens is you open a door and the machine slowly stops. This is a massive machine. The inherent problems with that is you can still have some potential damage if you open the machine and wait for it to stop. Too much inertia. So now you actually have to request to enter the machine. It's got an encoder and a guard logic system all tied together that you cannot enter the machine until it's in safe condition. So that keeps employees from being hurt and it's going to essentially stop any efficiencies and uh, you know, contamination in the machine. Absolutely. Absolutely, contamination is a good example of that. In the old days, none of these machines had the guarding. Uh, remember, you got open containers going through here, things could fall into there, so they just want to keep the operators. These machines are so automated now that the operator does not have to be staring into the machine. He's probably operated three, four machines on the line now. That, that has gone a long way. Uh, and also, a lot of the valve work and a lot of the electrical system now is directly connected so an operator doesn't have to lean in and open the valve, he doesn't have to lean in and make an adjustment. It's all done on the HMI, which is the human machine interface. All of that is done remote or in the history they would do it actually in the machine. We don't want anybody doing adjustments but in the machine. Uh, who are some of the companies that have implemented this? Actually the, the biggest three customers that uh, have driven this technology are Coca-Cola, Pepsi and Dr. Now, I guess my last question for you, obviously all of our readers couldn't attend the event. What would you think would be their number one takeaway, not only from the show, but from this product specifically? Uh, as far as uh, I think the big takeaway now is uh, flexibility. Uh, people are looking at, customers are looking at machines that aren't just specific to a single package or a single type of uh, product. Uh, we're constantly designing these machines to be able to be 
very flexible. They'll fill glass, they'll fill plastic, they'll fill aluminum cans. Uh, they do a, a host of different uh, products as far as what they fill. They do hot fill, they can do juices, you can do beer, you can do soda, you can do water. People don't want to get locked into a machine that will just do carbonated soft drinks. Far too much investment. The big, the big uh, money maker now is flexibility.